Okay, let's start with running in place. Punches. <clears throat> Jack cross, hook uppercut. Keep your feet moving. Keep your weight off your back heel. Keep your hands up. And then we're going to shuffle forward and back. Hands up. If you want to throw some punches in there as you shuffle, even better. Next thing is jacks. Ideally, you do your jacks like this, but if I do that, everything on the shelf behind me shakes. So I'm gonna do kitchen jacks instead. You can also do this if you're not landing. kicks front side back Okay, so now I want you to do what we just did two more times. Rounding in place, punches, shuffling forward and back, knees, jacks, and kicks. Um, I know when Miss McCoy does videos, she actually puts in like music or sounds and a little timer for how long you're supposed to be doing that. I can't, I'm not that good at video editing. The fact that I can clip together the pieces I want is about all you're gonna get. So two more sets. Um, took about three minutes to get through the set. Turn Pandora on for six minutes. Do two more sets. Then when you're done, come on back and we'll stretch. Reach up. And reach for the floor. Over to one side, grab your ankle, pull your chest to your knee. And then down in the side stretch, both heels on the floor here. Turn, stretch your hip flexor. Straighten out your legs. <clears throat> Toes are all facing in the same direction. Chin is up, back is flat. Reach chest down toward the front knee. You should feel this primarily in the hamstring of your front leg, a little bit in the calf of your back leg. Come to the center, toes straight forward, push your knees up. Other side, drive your ankle. Down in the side stretch. Turn, stretch your hip flexor. Straighten out your legs. Knees are straight, chin up, back flat, stretch your hamstring. And have a seat. Feet out. Reach over to one side, grab your toes. Reach over, so you're pulling your, chin, your ribs down to your thigh. Other side. And 
straight out to the front. Chin up, toes up, reach your elbows to the floor. Pull your feet in and come to a squat. Push your elbows inside your knees, push your knees out, rock back and forth. Then put your hands down and straighten out your legs. And up. Okay, so then what we're gonna do is we're going to do squat, lunge, and then the other side. Squat, lunge, and 10 punches. One, that's two, four, six, eight, 10. Squat, lunge, other side, squat, lunge, Okay, next one. You're gonna do push ups. Five push ups. One, two, three, four, five, and up. One, elbows. Two, three, four, five. One, 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 two, three, four, five. And last one for this round. And do sit ups. One, two, three, four, five. And five front kicks. One, two, three, four, five. And down. One, Two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so now, just like I told you with the warm up part of this, I want you to do two more sets. <clears throat> Each round was one minute. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> Each round was one minute. So if you do another minute of squat, lunge, and punches, another minute of push-ups to elbows, and another minute of sit-ups and up to front kicks. Two more times through, and then come on back to me and we'll get to curriculum. Okay, so this month you're getting your stripe <clears throat> for intensity. Um, we're going to start off working some kicks. First, we're going to work them for accuracy, which was the lesson last month, because you know, it, without accuracy, intensity is useless. It's, you're just dancing out there. Then we're going to um, hit, well, theoretically hit some targets if you have targets to hit, work on intensity, and then hit more stuff. So we're going to start with the front kick. Um, when you do your front kick, you don't want your standing foot facing completely forward, because if it's facing completely forward, when you kick something, it, you're going to get pushed back. So I've got my standing foot turned to almost 45 degrees. So I'm going to turn my standing foot. I'm going to bring my knee straight up to the target. And I'm going to push out. 
Okay, right now I have socks on, so I can hit with the ball of my foot. If you're wearing bare feet or, or socks, you can hit with the ball of your foot, that's ideal. If you're wearing big shoes or heavy boots, you might not be able to pull your toe back, then you're gonna hit with the whole bottom of your foot. It's not here, and it's not there. It's gonna come up here, so your knee is at the height of your hip. You're gonna extend and push, so that here is your rotation, and you're pushing your weight, so there's your backup mats, which is how we talked about getting power a couple months ago. So we're gonna do 10 kicks on this leg. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then we're gonna to switch to the other side. And I think I forgot to start my watch. And we'll do 10 on this side. Make sure your standing foot's turned a little bit and your hand is up. Hold on to the chair, even if you think you can, even if you know you can do it without the chair. I want you to hold the chair for now so you can focus on the correct parts of the kick. We'll put the chair away later. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, then we're going to do round house kicks. So I'll show you this from two different angles. When you do your roundhouse kick, if my target's there, the toes on my standing foot have to be pointed completely in the opposite direction, okay? My hips, <clears throat> if, you, if you need a visual of this, where I have the chair, you put a wall there. You should be able to turn your standing foot, get your knee up, so my hip, my knee, my ankle are all the same height, and my hips are open against the wall. If you have to have your hips away from the wall, you need to work on stretching your hips and getting more flexibility there. So my knee comes up towards the target, and then I'm gonna hit with either my instep, top of my foot, or the base of my shin. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, then we're going to do the other side. So this time I'm going to face here. So my standing foot is turned away. My hips are open. Other hand is up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then we're going to do the same thing with the side kick. And with the side kick, like the roundhouse kick, the standing foot is turned all the way there. I'm going to chamber initially as if I was going to be doing a front kick there. So my foot, my knee is pointing there. Then I'm going to turn the standing foot and turn my hip so that my butt and my heel are facing the target. Hand is up and I'm going to push out. So it doesn't just come up here, but it comes up and it pushes. So again, you have rotation there from your hips and you're pushing your weight in. There's backup mass. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then on the other side. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, 
And then, get the chair out of the way. Then we're going to actually, not this, just still be my chair. We're going to add a target. So for now, my target's just going to be the back of the chair. So I want to be able to hit the back of the target without sending the chair flying across the room. So one, two, three, four, five. And then the other leg. One, two, three, four, five. And then a round test kick. One, two, three, four, five. Other leg. One, two, three, four, five. And then a side kick. Hmm. Not sure what the best way is to do the side kick. Let's go off to this angle. One, two, three, four, five. Because I know a lot of you guys can kick over the chair, but that's not what I'm looking for now. I want you to hit the actual target. So not over, but pick a spot, the spindle or the middle of the back and hit that. One, two, because again, if you throw a beautiful intense kick and you're this far away from the target, it's not doing any good. Three, four, five. Now you can put the chair away. Okay, so <clears throat> now um, we're going to start off. We're going to do five of each of those kicks, but you're going to increase your intensity level every time. So one means you're just standing still and going through the motions. Two means if there was a target there, you might actually connect with the target. Three means you're going to hit harder. Four means they're going to know that you hit them. And five means you're going to knock them off their feet. And then same thing on the other side. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, if you're in the kids class, if you're in the adult class, you better know this. But if you're in the kids class, a lot of people don't understand the difference between increasing intensity and increasing noise. A loud key up, a loud noise is like bonus on top of the intensity, but a loud key up with a not intense kick is, or not intense technique of any sort is not useful. Okay, so now we'll do it with the roundhouse kick. First one just goes through the motions. Second one tags the target. Third one, they know they got hit. Four, they're thinking maybe it hurts. Five, you knock them down. Same thing on the other side. One two, three, four, five. And then we'll do the same thing with the side kick. One, two, three, four, five. And then on the other side, one, two, Three, four, five. Okay, then I want you to get a partner and get a target. Um, ideally, it would be a, a bouncy ball if you have one in your house. If not, a pillow or a crumpled up ball of paper. And they're gonna hold the target for you. And they're gonna, first you're gonna start with an intensity level doing it of one to five. So when they hold the target out, and you do your front kick or your round kick or your side kick. The first time, you're not even gonna hit the target. That's your level one. You're doing the kick technically correctly, but you're not making any contact. Level two, they're holding the target and you're gonna connect with your foot, but it's not gonna move. Okay, it's, it's just gonna to touch. It's not gonna to fall off their hand. Three, you're gonna hit it just enough to fall off the other side of their hand. Four, you're gonna hit it and it's gonna, fly across the room 
five, you're going to hit it hard enough that it's going to, if you have a doorway there, it's going to end up in the next row. Okay, so round front kicks, roundhouse kicks, side kicks. Five, each foot, building intensity, just like we did in the air, but hit the bouncy ball or the crumpled up piece of paper or the pillow, or whatever it is, harder each time. If you are doing the video for credit from me, that's what I want to see from the video. I want to see five kicks increasing in intensity so that your target bounces further each time. Okay, so we're going to work on a sparring combination. The sparring combination starts off with a roundhouse kick. So we spent a lot of time earlier in this class working on the roundhouse kick. So right now we're just going to do five with the front leg. One, two, three, four, five. And then we're going to switch to the other side. One, two, three, four, five. Then we're going to back up and we're going to travel forward doing them with the back leg. Make sure when you do this that your knee still comes up here and that, that you then turn this way. Don't swing the knee around. This is a sparring combination. You swing your knee around and right about here you're going to get hit in the head. One, two, three, I'm not going to fit five there. Four. Five. Okay, then I want you to do them in a circle. So we're going to do front leg kicks. Now I'm going to start here. One, two, three, four, five. And then the other stance. One, two, three, four, Five. Then you're gonna fall back in your guard stance. And on my count, you're gonna shuffle forward and do back fist or jab, reverse punch. So one, two, three, four, five. And switch stance. One, two, three, four, five. Then you're gonna change that. Again, I'm calling it a high block punch because that's what we call that. Um, from a self-defense point of view, what I'd actually be doing would be coming up under someone's chin with my forearm. I think you probably get in trouble if you do that sparring. But what I want you to be thinking about here is more, not so much a high block for somebody coming down over the top of you, but just bringing this hand up to protect your face from a, tar from a punch coming at you, either over the top or from one side or the other. My hand's there, it's ready to go. So one, with a punch, two, three, four, five. And same thing on the other side. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, then what I want you to do, we're gonna, my notes are over there. So we're gonna do these, we're gonna mix them up. So I'm going to go forward doing jab cross. One, two, three, four. Then I'm going to back up with the high block punch. One, two, three, four. And then the other stance. One, because sparring is not always forward. Sometimes it's got to be defensive too. Two, three, four. And back. One, two, three, four. Okay, we're going to put those together now. We're going to put both sets together. So we're going to start here, and I'm going to do, I'm not sliding forward. I'm not shifting my weight. I mean, I'm just shifting my weight. I'm not sliding forward. I'm not shuffling. On the first part, I'm doing a front leg roundhouse kick, and as I put it down, I'm going to shuffle in and jab cross. So roundhouse kick, jab cross. So let's do five of those. One, two, three. Four, five. Then I'm going to do the other side. And what I want you to notice is that I'm not going kick, land, think about it, punch, punch. I'm kicking, and as my foot hits the floor, that first punch is coming out. Because if you kick and you land, that gives them time to block your kick and still come back up and hit you in the head. You want to do the kick where they're going to drop their hand. 
and at, while they're hands down because your foot's still landing, you're gonna come right in with the punch. So let's do five of those. One, two, three, four, five. Now we're gonna put it together with the high block punch. One, two, three, four, five. And the other side, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, then I want you to get your partner again. And I want you to start in your guard stance. And your partner's gonna circle around you. So if your partner calls to you from there, you're gonna turn to there. Roundhouse kick, high block punch. Come back to your guard stance. They call you from there. Roundhouse kick, high block punch. They call you from the back. Roundhouse kick, high block punch. So I want them to move around you at least 10 times. Call to you and you're gonna to turn towards them at either back fist punch or high block punch. Okay, two self defenses, one to review from the green belt class and one from your class that we started working on last month that we're gonna work on some more today. So the green belt one is eventually gonna be scissors. It's gonna be scissors. Um, if you're working by yourself, it's very hard to do scissors, but just like every form is a stylized way to practice self-defense, you can take your self-defenses and practice them as a form, which is what we're gonna do with this. So somebody is throwing a punch at my head. You guys, when I say, what do, you, what do you need to do? What's the most important thing to do? You know the answer to that is to get out of the way. Okay, so this is the most important part. So I'd like you to get a partner to work with you for this. Um, if not, if, if you can't bribe anybody with brownies or something or, or doing the dishes or vacuuming the floor, I don't know, you're on your own. But they're gonna come at you and you're just gonna get out of the way. So one, two, three, four, five. Then we're gonna add a block to it. One, two, three, four, five. Then I'm gonna add a parry. Okay, if I block here, the parry is not a, it's not a block, it's a redirect. So I parry here, I am block here, and this hand comes up underneath and the back of my hand slides down their arm and then grabs their hand. So I'll show you that in both directions. One, two, three, four, five. Go in this way so you can follow along. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, now we're gonna add to that. Remember the roundhouse kicks that we practiced earlier in this class? We're gonna add two roundhouse kicks. So somebody is throwing a punch at you. You're gonna get out of the way, block, parry, grab their hand and throw two roundhouse kicks. The first one's gonna come down right here and the second one is gonna come down there. And you'll see why later, but right now I want you to think about that. So one, two, three, Four. I keep this hand up just in case they're thinking about punching or throwing an elbow with their other hand. My face is protected. One more here. Five. Okay, then I'll do it the other way if it's easier for you to follow that way. One. I'm going to crash into the cabinet. One. Two, three, four. I'm creeping up on the cabinet again. Five. 
Okay, so I'd like you to practice that with your partner. And then you're gonna practice the shoot. You don't need a partner for this. What you need to do is figure out which is your front knee and which is your back knee. Okay, so I'll show you going this way first. I'm gonna get in my guard stance and I'm gonna touch my front knee. And I'm gonna put my front knee on the floor. And what's gonna happen is most of you guys are gonna touch your front knee and put your back knee on the floor. That's not a shoot. You gotta have control here. If you don't have control, if you don't have strength in your quads, when you put that knee down, you're gonna slam it into the floor and it's gonna get hurt. If you don't have that, do a billion squats. Two billion, three billion, you need to build the quad strength. So I'm gonna start here, touch my front knee, put it on the floor, take my other leg, wrap it around the back of the person's ankle, and for now, I'm just gonna stand up again. So I'm gonna do this coming forward. I'm gonna touch my front knee, put it on the floor, reach around, and come up. Touch my front knee, put it on the floor, reach around, and come up. Okay, if you're doing this on the hard wooden floor like I am, I want you to stop the video and go in the living room and do it on the rug. Hurts a lot less on the rug. Even this, even if you're bony and all, even if your quads are tight, this hurts. So go practice that on the rug and then come back to me to do some forms. Okay, forms. Um, the review form from the beginner's class is action karate form two. I'm looking for intensity right now, not necessarily speed, but every move, you're focused on the target, you're hitting hard, your stance is correct, so that I can see that you're actually hitting, hitting what you're intending to and I can visualize what's happening to them. So we start here, action karate form two. One, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, now you do your left hand first. One, two, three, four, and set. Okay, then, at, um, comma set is action karate form four, five, and eight. So we did four last month. We're gonna run through it one time because you're gonna still be responsible for a strike test this month. And then we're gonna do the first part of Action Karate Form 5 with commas. Action Karate Form 5 is the form that the intermediate students are doing this cycle. So you guys should know this because you had to do it for strike test last month. Okay, so we're gonna start here. We're gonna run one time through Action Karate Form 4, which is the beginning of comma set. So Action Karate Form 4. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Five, six, one, two, make sure you turn it down when you kick so you don't kick your, you don't cut your foot. Here, go. Okay, then we're going to, action karate form five, we're going to start right from here. One, look look, look, two, chop, punch, twirl, pull back in, chop, punch, twirl, and back to right, and look, one, two, three, chop, punch, twirl, chop, punch, twirl, and back to right. Okay, so if you've not already been working on twirls, if you keep a death grip on your comma, it's not a very interesting looking twirl. I just hold it between my, between here, between my thumb and my index finger. I push it down and I catch at the end as I strike. So I'm not just twirling, you can do that with a baton, but this is a weapon, so I twirl and strike, twirl and strike, twirl and strike. I can go outside, or inside, or I can do full figure eights. And my wrists are very tight, and it still looks better than that. Okay, if you've got flexible wrists, um, ask Sabrina Wright or Tyler Rafa to show you how they do that. It looks, that's the goal.
Okay, so I want you to practice action cardio form two, each move with intensity. Runs through comma set, runs through the action karate form four part of comma set. And then I want you to do the action karate form five, just that first phrase, part of comma set. But every time in both of those forms, every time you do a punch, there should be either an inside, I mean, either an outside or an inside or a full figure eight. Okay, chucks. This is review. Um, this is from the single chuck is from the beginners class. Double chuck is from the intermediate class, the green belt class. Okay, so what we're going to practice right now is helicopters. So when you do a helicopter, you always want to hold your chucks as close to the string as you can. I'm going to face it down and mow the grass. And then you're going to be careful for the ceiling fan, and you're going to bring it up, and you're going to do a helicopter. So mow the grass and helicopter. Now you're going to do four down and four up. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Then you're going to do three down and three up. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Then two down and two up. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Then you're going to go one down, one up. One down, one up. One down, one up. Okay, to catch that, I'm going to hit my shoulder. You can just go tap shoulder and catch. I find that if I tap shoulder and do one spin, it lets me think about getting that hand open so I can catch. So you're gonna go one, 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 one. A whole bunch of them. You might have to think about how you're gonna catch. You might have to keep going until you think about it. Shoulder, catch. Then you're gonna do it on the other side. And what you're gonna find when you do two hands together, which you'll do in a minute, your dumb hand will generally follow along with your smart hand. When you're doing your smart hand by itself, sometimes it's really stupid and it just doesn't work at all. So we're going to start with our helicopters, four down of mowing the grass and four helicopters up. Watch out for the fan. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Then we change it to three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Then we make it twos. One, two, one, two. One, two, one, two. Then we do ones. And once you've done that, and you have time to think about it, shoulder and catch. Okay, then I want you to get your other one. I'm not sure where I left my other one. It's over here. Okay, so we're going to start again. The sleeves are falling down. They're going to get caught in my weapons. Okay, so we're going to start again. When you're doing these, at the bottom, they're coming towards each other. At the top, they're going away from each other. So I'm going to start at the bottom. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Then we're gonna do threes. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Then twos. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, then ones. And catch. Okay, I want you to do those. Practice those at least one more time through with single on each hand and with double on two hands. 